Be confident in this very thing, that he that began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So when this really dropped on me, I am, I'm, come on, turn to your neighbor and say, be confident. Come on, why can you be confident? Because God is not a man that he should lie. Has he not said it, will he not also do it? If he started something in you, he ain't not going to leave you hanging. Amen. If he made you some promises, even if it was 20 years ago, 25 years ago, just while I was saying that in the spirit, I went back to when we were in the storefront. It was kind of over there. It's a new building now, but Austin's Furniture. And people would come through, and they would prophesy about what this church was going to look like. And we almost looked like what they said it would look like. And we will. I remember, I don't know, Joe Morris, he, he, he hasn't been in a while, but I don't know why his came up. He, he said to Rhonda and I that uh, people are going to call you mom and dad. And I thought, well, that's just silly. But they do. But I'm not old enough to be some of y'all's dad, all right? <laughs> but spiritually. And he said, this church should be known for women in their later years of having babies as a sign of life. Y'all be careful. I don't know where that one came up, but it did. Y'all be careful. And so, because where the glory of God is, there's life. There's life. Because God is life. Amen. Amen. He touches dead things and brings them to life. I'm confident whatever he said to you from the word and then spoke to your heart, he put it in there. And I was thinking back as I was ministering there, I just went back there and to that old tattered, nasty carpet they put back together. And that country, y'all remember? That country blue stage with those black chairs we got out of a nightclub and sanded down. And the country blue pretty curtains that were out in the, the, the foyer to, because uh, it was just all glass, to the upright piano that was broken down, to a bar, to a, a given organ to drums that I don't even know if they had a whole piece. I, I don't know if they were all there. The drummer couldn't play anyway, so, but it didn't really matter. <laughs> this is funny. So he, he went to take lessons so we could do the faster songs. I don't know what those were. Those are the old camp meeting. We just had straight beat back then. And I would try to keep him on. I led praise and worship. And I'd try to keep him on. My, my leg hurt every time church was over. And then Ted came and started playing the bass. We, we, had, we had an old Church of God woman who used to play on the, she played the piano, a Nazarene woman who got filled with the Holy Ghost playing on the organ. We had a good old country boy on the drums, and then Ted showed up and started playing bass. And I think about then, I started to turn everything over to Rhonda. <laughs> I just but remembering where you came from is good. But my point is, the Lord spoke some things back there. And I'll be real honest, if he just said, it's going to take you 25 years, I was like, that's a wrong number, Lord. You, were, you ring the wrong number. Let's do this quicker. But you know what? We're there, and there's more to get. But what has God told you? What has God promised you? The promises of God are yes and amen. But you see, if he drops something in you, if he began it, come on. If he began it, if you put a business in your heart and you haven't seen it yet, it's still there, though. Stay with it. If you put something in your heart, a desire, if you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires. of your heart. He'll drop those desires in and then he'll bring them to pass. I am confident, it says. Come on, everybody say, I'm confident. There's no wiggle room in that. I'm in faith. You could say that I'm in faith about this. I'm confident in this very thing that he who began a good work. Let's look at this. Hebrews chapter 12. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2 says this, looking unto Jesus, the author, he's the author. So he start, he who began a good work in you, he who authored it, he who pioneered it. Listen, the dreams that are in you, the desires that are in you, things you want to do for God, things that you want. Now, you got to make sure it's from God because he'll never fulfill things you came up with. There's no power in that. You put your hand to something and it doesn't work. You have to wonder, did God put you up to that? Did God tell you to put your hand to that? Because whatever you put your hand to that came from headquarters, that came from God, he, he's obligated himself. I'm not obligating him. He's obligated himself to perform it. Because he's the author. He's, he's, he's the beginner. Just like the Holy Ghost authored in Mary Jesus, he authored, he put something in you. He's the beginner of the good work in you. He predestined you to have good things happen in your life, according to Ephesians 2.10. When before you did anything right, before you did anything wrong, he decided who you were going to be. And he decided how great you were going to be and how awesome you were going to be and how good your life was going to be. He prearranged it. But you've got to have confidence in this. He who began a good work in me will complete it. He's the author and the finisher of his faith. You know, one of the things I love about Jesus, he didn't leave things undone. Remember, he said this, my meat, my sustenance is to do the will of God, the Father who sent me. You, you don't know what keeps me going. What keeps me going, he was telling the future apostles, he was saying, you don't know what keeps me going. What keeps me going, is what, what sustains me is doing his will. I've come to finish the work he sent me. And one of the, the last thing he said when he was in a human body the last thing he said when he was in a human body with flesh, blood, and bones running through it was, it is finished. And so you think he's going to leave you hanging? You think he's going to let you down? You think he could ever disappoint you? Do you think he likes things undone? No. He's the author and the finisher. He who began is also going to complete it. Come on, he who started it is also going to complete it. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 says this. Philippians 2, 13. It says, for it is God which worketh in you. God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That word work is the E-N-E-R-G-E-O, energeo, and it means the divine energy put forth to effectually bring forth a tangible and noticeable change. So God authors something in you. And when that begins, how many are grateful when you got born again? That was the real beginning, wasn't it? And then I'm, I'm grateful. Are you grateful when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? I mean, I'm grateful before that he delivered and changed my life. And I know along the way, he has done things. So he who began a good work, and how does he begin? Well, he gives you his word in a seed form. Listen, listen to me. His, see, everything we want always instantaneous. And I like instantaneous. And mir miracles are instantaneous. But also in our daily life, there's some things that it takes time to grow. And, and what happens is sometimes he'll give it to you in a seed form. And even some of you, there's a dream that God gave you. He gave it to you in a seed form. And it's not yet fully grown, but it is growing. And one day soon and very soon as you walk through this door into this next year, that seed is going to be a tree and there's going to be the fruit of your dream. Amen. And you'll be able to walk in it. Be able to walk in it. But what is the seed? It's the word of God. It's a seed that grows up. And so it's important for you and I to understand that, um, that, that he began a good work in you. And he's, what does that say? He's effectually. For God works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. For it's God which he, he's working in you. But you've got to do this sometimes. And this one, might, this one might hurt a little bit. Father, work it out. Now, it's almost January 1st. Now, in Madison, I think there's a new gym even. And January, the first couple weeks, the gymnasiums will be what? Full. Packed. 
Now, since I've been going, I have been, on a regular basis, I'm looking forward to those people going away. <laughs> because <laughs> they're going to take up my machine. <laughs> All right? <laughs> but they're just going to start, and God wants us to finish. And when he tells you to do something, it's got, you got to work out. So you got to work out. So there's some things in you sometimes God has to work out so he can get you where you need to go. Now, naturally speaking, when you work out, you know, it's not necessarily fun. I know some people enjoy it. I, don't, I think they're crazy. But um, some people enjoy it. I don't. And, 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 but, but the truth is I don't enjoy it when... Let's not call it correction, <laughs> although we should. It, but when he starts to work things out. It is he, put that back up, it is he who both does what? Works in you, both to will. Sometimes in order to get for him to be able to do of his good pleasure, he got to work something in you. Or work something out of you. He might deal with, does everybody all right? I'm living in the overflow. I, I, but in order for him to get you where he wants to get, you got to understand, Lord, whatever, Jesus help us. Whatever it is, you got to get out of me to get me where I need to go and be real serious about it. Because you pray that kind of prayer, there's the Holy Ghost on the inside. When you go to say something that he's trying to work out of you, then he'll deal with you. And you ain't got a choice. You, you can either push it down or let it correct you, let, let, whatever that is. It's like, you know, people love getting in the fire of God. I love the fire of God. You all like the fire of God? But Malachi talks about it being like a refiner's fire. And what happens is when the fire gets really hot, God, that's the time that he likes to start dealing with you about stuff. And that what happens in a real refiner's fire of gold, the dross, the, the, the impure stuff does what? It begins to rise to the top. Well, you got a choice. You either skim it, you either get it out, or you cool it down. Because you're going to have to deal. Do you like the fire? I like the fire. And we need more fire. Amen. Run around the room, dance, roll if you want to. But I guarantee you, as you're doing that, when you get up, the Lord's going to be dealing with you about something. Yeah. Amen? Because, because he's working in you. Say, God, God work, in me, work in me. Both to will. Both to will. Change, my will. change my will. Change anything in me anything. that you need to anything. so that you can do what you want to do, do in my life. It's not, it's not God on hold. It's you holding them up. Amen. Have you ever missed a flight? For those occasional ones that always run on time. It wasn't their fault that you were late. He said, well, it's out of my control. I get that. Some things seem to be. But in God, we can be on time. And I believe as a church, we're on time. Are, are you grateful we're on time? <laughs> Glory to God, we're on time. Jesus said this in Revelations 1 8. He said, I am Alpha. I'm the beginning. I am Omega. I, I like this in Revelation when he says, I am the great Amen. Everybody say Amen. amen. What does that mean? It means so be it, but it's also. The final word is Jesus, because he authored something in you. Now he wants to amen it. No, he authored something in you. And now he wants to finalize it. He wants to bring it to pass. And I don't want to be the holdup, and you don't want to be the holdup. So, Lord, work in me. Lord, work in me. So, 
Change my will. Change whatever you got to change in me. Now listen, that's not a casual prayer. And you can pray that prayer and then go get up tomorrow morning and do everything again the same way you did it in 2019, 2018, 2017. But doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the what? It's, it's the definition of insanity. So if you want a different result, you're going to have to change some things. And those of you who are married, now I say this with all fear and trembling and honor to the marriage vow and covenant. But you all, if you're tied together, you ought to be able to talk to one another. And you ought to be able to inspire one another. I said inspire. I didn't say yell at, fuss at, harp on, nag. Uh, but we, you're, t- you're together. You're in a covenant. You ought to be able to share everything. And you ought to be the biggest encouragers of one another. And you ought to be able to tell your spouse, you need to do this different. We need to do this better together. Figure out a way to do it. Now, y'all looking at me like whatever, but I don't care. I just said it and I ain't taking it back. Amen. 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 You know what? We need good examples of marriage today. And your children watching you working things out, figuring things out, because they know when you close the bedroom door and go in there and just have a little talk, they know you fighting. We're not going to do it in front of the children. (laughs) Well, the children would like to see you work it out in front of them. Not fight in front of them, work it out. That's extra. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the author and the finisher. Amen. We want to get to the finish. We want to get to the end. Uh, And I don't want this just to be another New Year's. Oh, the beginning, the end of a new year. Because I really tried to go a whole different direction. Because I just didn't want to be cliche. But I'm telling you, the Lord dropped this in my heart, Philippians 1, 6, just, I'm confident. I'm confident. He who began a good work is also going to finish it. How do we get to the finish? The Apostle Paul, one of my favorite scriptures, Acts 20, 24, says, none of these things move me. Acts 20, 24. None of these things move me. So listen, I want a good 2020, but how many know the devil's not going to go to sleep? How many know the world's getting worse and worse? And they're in darkness. The Lord told me they're not even in gross darkness yet. Because I was talking to him about gross darkness. He said, this ain't gross darkness. Well, he didn't say probably eight. He might have. I don't know. But it's like, this is not gross darkness. You haven't seen gross darkness. So the world's going to be them. So we can't, we can't, whatever. Politics, oh, Lord, y'all, please don't get all messed up. God cares more about the church house than the White House. I know that was a weak amen. I don't care. I'll say it again. I'm very feisty tonight. The Lord told me to relax and have fun. I warned the staff. I said, if I'm going to relax and have fun, that means the ornery is coming back. Because <laughs> I'm just ornery. And so <laughs> Robert said, we have a large staff now. He said, could I be excluded? So, <laughs> no. Um, I'm just telling you, don't get all messed up and what else is going on out there. This is a year you've got to set, what did the Holy Ghost say? Set your affections on him. I could throw in, don't look to the left, don't look to the right. Set your affections on him. Don't let things move you. Don't let Twitter move you, Facebook move you, don't let the news move you. Don't let anything move you. Don't let anything or anyone move you. Don't let Fox move you. Don't let NBC move you. Don't let anybody move you. You know what the word says about what we're supposed to do. As believers, we're supposed to pray for those that are authority. That we may live a godly, quiet, peaceable life. And that people will get born again. Yes, you need to pray. And yes, you need to vote. Do all that coming up. But keep your attention. I know other pastors and will tell you, you know, be politically this and that and how important this or that is. I can only tell you what God told me for our church. He said, I care more about the church house than the White House. I remember one time I was praying and I was asking the Lord about, you know, things being passed about health care and stuff. And I was really just asking the Lord to intervene and get in there and make sure we get a good thing and all that kind of stuff. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, I gave you a health care plan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we're not against insurance. You should get some. 
All right? I'm not. I'm just telling you, we get so focused on the natural. I don't want to be like the Apostle Paul addressing the Corinthian church. He said, I could only address you as mere men, carnal. So that's not who we are. Obviously we're not because you could, you know, not everybody can handle this tonight on New Year's Eve. We're supposed to be fun. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. None of these things move me. Say, I'll not be moved. moved. How? I don't count my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy. Everybody say joy. Joy. Turn to your neighbor and say, have some joy. joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace. When Paul said this, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Let me leave you with one thing. It was interesting. The scripture means so much to me. I could take you on Route 1 in Illinois as, we pull, as I pull out of my blacktop road onto Route 1 in Illinois going from my house to Paris on my way to church. I was just starting in the ministry. Probably stuff was going on. I was a little concerned about stuff. I know I didn't have any money. Lots of stuff going on. And I remember when the Lord spoke to me, he's the author and he's the finisher. He's the alpha, he's the omega. Has he not said it? Will he not also do it? He who began a good work in you will complete it. He is the alpha, he's omega. He is the final word. He's the great amen. And so along the way is God's working in you. I remember I was, I was driving, and the Spirit of God said it to me this way. He said, if you'll obey me, if you'll obey me, if you'll obey me. So that's personal. Whatever the Lord says, what I have to do, I got to do it. I got to submit myself to God. I got to do what he says to do. If you'll obey me, what else does that mean? That means I got to continue to be a doer of the word. Doesn't matter how long you've done this, this can get even this for us. Some of you not yet, you've been haven't been here long enough, but those of you who have been a while and doing the things of God, this can get normal. It's normal living and it doesn't excite you as much as it used to. You're just kind of hanging on and going through the emotions. May you get a jolt of the Holy Ghost this year and be excited about what God is doing in your life. And in the body of Christ. If you'll obey me, he said, I will perfect everything, everything. Everything was a big word that stood out to me. Everything that concerns you. And so I always took that word concern. I mean, if I've got something that's a problem, you know, then that concerns me, you'll take care of it. And that's one way to look at it. But also, concerned you, could, it also means anything about you in your personal life. Anything that's pertaining to you may be a better way to say it. So it says this, and this is my life scripture. Psalms 138, verse 8. It says, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of thine own hands. And so this is what I want to add. I don't know. I've preached on this a few times. Really, I don't preach a lot on this verse because it's just really kind of a, a special verse to me. I use it on you all all the time. Like a church member, something that will come up. One of the first things I'll say when something's going on in your life, maybe, maybe the devil's tried to take you out. I'll say, Lord, they're part of my body. They're, I'm their shepherd, and they concern me. So I'm asking you to perfect it. I'm asking you to change it. I'm asking you to get in the middle of it. And I don't know how many times just with that simple prayer, things have changed. Because I, I, you know, I haven't been perfect. <laughs> God knows. But even when you mess up, even if everything's not good always around you, you don't do everything just right. Aren't you grateful you live in the new covenant under grace? And if you mess up, you can get forgiveness, and the blood of Jesus will cleanse you, clear you from all unrighteousness, get you right back at that righteous place. 
And you can, if you've been in disobedience, it, come on, it don't take hours, it don't take years, it don't take, it don't take days, it don't take weeks, it don't take, it don't take, it don't take a, it's not a process. You can get right back in total obedience in a split second. It's just a thing in your heart. But look at, look at this. Thy mercy, anybody grateful for the mercy of God? It endures forever. How many know his mercy is new every morning? Aren't you grateful he's merciful? And then the psalmist said, forsake not the work of thine own. In other words, saying, you made me. I'm your workmanship. Ephesians says it, I'm your workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You made me. And this is what I know. You'll never forsake me. You'll never leave me. And you're going to get me to the desired end. Jeremiah 2, 13. What? He says, come and pray. Right? Talk to God about it, basically. He's, and then he says this. I'll give you an expected end. I'll give you. What's, what's our end? Our end's victory. I love that line in that song, the ablaze worship team was singing. I've read, what was it? I've read the end of the story. What it was, I know, that, what is, I know how the story ends. Listen to me. Do you know how your story ends? Not just overall God's story, not just overall the church story. Do you know how your story ends? And when you can see the end, when you can see it the way God wants it, then everything's going to change. Amen. We're going to partake of communion together. And so as you take it, I want you to be very in. I want you to understand what you're doing. So again, um, let's do this just real quick in case somebody brought someone tonight. Because you don't have to wait. I want you to be ready. Every, every head bowed, every eye closed. Just a, month, just a minute. If you're in this room and you don't know Jesus is your Savior, you once walked with God and you've walked away, and somebody brought you tonight, and whew, you're like, these people are crazy. Yes, we are. We're crazy in love with Jesus. And that will change your life too. I'm not going to ask you to come up front, but I want, I want to pray for you, and I want to know if I'm praying for anybody. So if every head bowed, every eye closed, if you've never received Jesus as Savior, you've never made him the Lord of your life, or you've been away from God and you've been living in and practicing sin and you need to get things right with God, I want you to lift your hand right now. I want to I pray for you because I want you to partake of communion with us. I'm just going to look around, make sure. Okay. Everybody look at me. So, you know, sometimes with communion... People have taught you, uh, you can only take it at your church, and you can only take it at church, and a pastor has to serve you. That's not true. I think Jim was bringing it up Sunday morning. You know, you can take communion every day if you want to, as long as it doesn't become a ritual and a habit, and it's just a thing. Two elements. Bread represents the body, the broken body of the Lord Jesus. So when you take the bread, you understand that that body represents the veil torn in two. It also represents the fact that by the stripes of Jesus, you've been healed. You don't even have to wait till Friday night to get healed. You can get healed right now when you take communion, if you believe. The cup, the blood, represents the blood for forgiveness of sins. But also, it was real strong in my heart. I want you, when you take this cup tonight, I want you to believe for your safety, your family's safety. Um, and, and as far as if the Lord puts someone in your heart as you drink that cup, Believe God for their safety. Now, what he's put in my heart, I think, as a pastor, um, you know, we have responsibility in the region. But um, I had this on my heart, so I'm going to do it this way. And it's not just in light of things that happen. But for me, when I'm taking, I'm going I'm to be doing it general. But I'm going to believe God for protection for um, the Madison Police Department. And the Huntsville Police Department. Of course, we live, the church is here in Madison, and I mostly know Madison uh, police. You know, we've got great guys that help us here, and we also have members of our church that are on the police force. But that's what, do, Pastor Mark, do you have something on your heart? Well, just to do it, but I don't have anything, but, but I, I'm just going to do it. And I'm going I'm to use my authority um, because I, I, I'm pastor in this town, especially in Madison. I have authority here, but I have authority in the region. And so I just, I just have that on my heart. But for you... 
a family member, a friend, a coworker, somebody come up, you can use your faith and extend it to, as you drink the cup, to believe God for them. Um, and, and, you know, uh, what was communion? Well, it's from the Lord's, it's from the Passover. Uh, right? The children of Israel were slaves. All the, you know, the signs and the wonders came to get them out. The last one was the Passover. You know, where they put the blood on the doorpost. Listen, if, 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 if a blood of an animal, of a lamb, a natural lamb, was able to protect them from death, how much more the blood of Jesus? Amen? And then what happened? They went out. There was not one sick or feeble among them. That means everybody who partook got healed. Come on, y'all. This is, there's a million slaves. you telling me that one of them don't got a broken arm, a broken leg, malnourished? Because remember when it was going on? I mean, they were sending them everywhere to gather straw and stuff to make bricks. It was hard. So there were some sick ones. But when they partook, what happened? Looking forward, the power of God healed them. And then as they partook, they said, uh, go, go knock on the doors to your neighbors, to, to your masters, and, and get you some clothes. Get you some shoes. I don't think the Lord intended for that one pair of shoes to last them 40 years. You know, everybody gets excited about a pair of shoes for 40 years. Well, my, I don't like that. The styles have changed way. You know, I want a new pair often, all right? You can have you a pair for 40 years. Good for you. I, I, want, I want some new ones. Anyway, and so, but my point is what? When they partook, going forward, touching something that was way in the future, they were able to pull it to that moment in a type, in a shadow. How much more the reality of what Jesus has done. So as you partake, as this year comes to a close, and we walk into 2020, just do it on.